In this video segment, we'll cover the process of creating a wall elevation for a kitchen and then using the automatic and manual dimension tools. The same process will work for your other interior wall elevations. Let's begin in the sample plan by using the wall elevation tool. The wall elevation restricts the view to a room and hides the floor and ceiling platforms. If you need a broader view of multiple rooms, you can then use the cross-section tool or remove the clip to room settings. Please see our other videos or the built-in help to learn more about that process. Once you've created a wall elevation and you want your dimensions to typically be in inches and if you're going to be sending the view out at half inch scale, be sure your dimension defaults, in my case it's on the top of my toolbar, is set to be on kitchen and bath. That way your dimensions will be optimized for dimensions that are at half inch scale. Chief Architect tries to abide by the National Kitchen and Bath Association guidelines for dimensioning and it will be optimized. Just make sure your dimension defaults is on kitchen and bath in your elevation view. Underneath the automatic dimension tools is a specific tool for placing automatic dimensions. This is the easiest and fastest way to generate your dimensions. Typically you might want to modify these dimensions. The program is set up to automatically refresh the dimensions so as your design evolves the dimensions will auto refresh. So if you want to make changes to the dimensions you might push that toward the end of your design process so you can leverage the automatic dimension process the program is creating for you. When you're ready to make changes to the dimensions such as when I delete the duplicate hood centerline dimension program will notify you about auto refresh and ask if you want to turn it off. Once auto refresh is off, let's go through and modify the dimensions for the top line dimension string. Let me begin by pulling the end-to-end -end dimension down a little bit closer to the box dimension string. For the box dimension string, notice that on the upper wall cabinet it picked up the pie shape cut. When you click on the dimension string, you'll see diamonds for each location point where the dimension is locating. To remove a diamond, I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to pull it off a little ways so it's not on another object. You can see the dimension string has been removed and updated for the 24 inch cabinet. As we slide along and we check the other dimensions, you can see that it's locating the window. We already removed the center line for the cook hood, the other window, and then the cabinet box. You can see that it picked up the pie cut. Again, to modify that diamond and pull it off, I'm going to click on it and just drag it off a ways past the object to remove that dimension location. Top line dimension string looks good. Let's take a look at both side dimensions. Currently they are identical and sometimes I like to add more detail such as the toe kick, the countertop thickness, the molding detail on one side and leave the other side at a summary level. Let's begin on the right side. I'm going to click on the dimension string and where you get the extra diamond you can add you notice where I clicked the red selection. I have an extra diamond. Just like when you pull a dimension string off, you can add a dimension point or a dimension location item. So I'm going to click this extra diamond and I'm going to come down and I'm going to pull it down to where the toe kick is. Again, where you've selected the red selection handle, you get the extra diamond. I'm going to move that up to the countertop and then I'm going to remove the dimension point off of the window casing. I'll just pull that off just a little ways to remove it off the window casing. Where the dimension is selected, the red selection handle, the diamond, the extra diamond right here. Go ahead and pull that up to the light rail. And then one more selection, the extra diamond. Let's pull that on to the stacked molding. Then I'm going to toggle on my crosshairs. I like to use this to align the dimensions and clean it up a little bit. So let's begin with the countertop. I'm going to pull that out. The light rail, pull that out. Again, I'm kind of using the crosshairs for a vertical alignment. And then I'm going to pull off the stacked molding. And that way it's easy to read the dimension string. We have more detail on the right side than we do on the left side. On the left side, I'm going to click on the dimension string, 
pull it off the window and now I have a very clean summary dimension on the left side and a more detailed dimension string on the right side. It's easy to format and arrange the dimensions to fit your style. If your preference is to dimension in a more detailed format, let me show you where you can define and set those dimensions up to save time. Under the Edit Active View tool up in the upper menu system, you can come down on the selected defaults. And since we are using the Kitchen and Bath Save Plan View, the dimension default is also using a dimension called Kitchen and Bath Dimensions. To edit those dimensions, we'll use the pencil tool to edit them. On the Setup Automatic panel, down toward the bottom, you can see for the elevation, here's the auto refresh. We'd turned those off when we manually began editing them. There are settings to place the dimensions on the left, right, and top and bottom. On the panel Locate Auto Elevation is where you can specify which objects to locate. As we kind of start at the top, currently it's set up to locate the wall surface. If you wanted to change that to the wall dimension layer, such as a stud, that's where you change the setting. And then on the locate objects, here's where you're locating on the inner dimension string, the casing for the window, the cabinet information. There are settings for the countertop, the toe kick, all things that I added earlier in the video. And then on the outer string, it's selected for the fixtures and appliances for center lines. These settings can be defined before you create the dimensions to save yourself editing time. As long as I'm in the dimension defaults, there are settings for locate manual when you're using the manual dimension tool, the simple ruler tool. The same types of information can be configured to select and modify things that the dimension will pick up, the end-to-end -end dimension tool, and the centerline tool. So these are all things. I'm going to show you manually how to dimension the bottom of this. Let's go ahead and close this dialog. And next, let's delete the dimension string that were automatically placed on the bottom. I'm simply going to use the delete tool. And let's talk about how to use the manual dimension tool for those cases where you want to run your manual dimension. I'm going to begin with the manual dimension tool. This is the tool that is the ruler, manual dimension tool. Again, I'm using the kitchen and bath save plan view, which is using that kitchen and bath dimension default we were just looking at. While using this tool, I'm going to come up just above the bottom of the base cabinet on the lower left and I'm going to click and drag all the way through the entire run of cabinets. Then I'll click on it and I'll pull it down to locate that dimension string. When that dimension string picked up the pie cabinets, it picked up that selection. Notice near the red selection handle, you see the dimension points it's locating. I'm going to pull that off the pie on the right side. I'm going to do the exact same edit, pull the diamond off the pie corner cabinet and remove that selection. And now I have the box, the cabinet box locations on this first dimension string. The next tool I'm going to use is the centerline dimension tool. Same process, I'm going to click and drag up higher on the cabinet run and then I'll click on it and pull it down. Part of the reason I'm not clicking where I want this and dragging it, the reach may not reach the cook range and it might not dimension it. So I will typically draw it through the object and then reposition it. This is a preference. I will click on the center line itself, pull that up into the fixture. And then the final dimension string is the end to end dimension string. And I'm going to click and drag again up through the cabinet boxes all the way wall to wall. Click on it pull it down to locate it. And then one of the little checks I like to do is make sure the number 264 matches the overall run 264. And I typically do that side to side, 119 and 5 8 119 and 5 8 The final item for the video is to cover up the cut where the section cut through the cabinets. Not always possible to get the cut right at the end of a cabinet. Notice that the wall cabinet and the base cabinet are exposed to the inner box. If you want to clean that up, I use the cross box CAD tool. You'll find that tool underneath the CAD tools. It's specifically called a CAD cross box. I'm just going to come in here and click and drag right over the top of this cabinet. 
that creates the cross box. If I send this to a layout sheet as black and white, I will not need to colorize it. If I do want to colorize it, I can double click, open it up, click on the color underneath the fill style, and I'm just going to use the eyedropper, pick up the color off the cabinet box, and then you see it fill in. I'll do the same thing for the upper wall cabinet cross box. Click and drag to create the box over the cabinet. Same operation, change the fill style. Use the eyedropper, pick up the color of the cabinet, and then I'll hold my shift key down, select both cross boxes. And since this is symmetrical, I'm going to use the copy and then reflect about my lower edit menu, pick up the center of the room, and flip the cross backs over to the side. That wraps up this wall elevation and dimensioning video. To learn more, please see our other videos, and thanks for watching.